I'm expendable. I started last week on the message on I'm expendable, amen. And uh, I had a lot of back, um, feedback for it, and uh, I'm praying that God is expanding our hearts, amen, to receive and to give the love of God, amen. I'm expendable. To expand is to become or make larger or more expand, extend, extend, extensive. Is to amplify, to augment, to boost, to build, to enlarge, to escalate, to extend, to grow and to increase. This is something you can expect from God for, for this year. Amen? Amen? Say you are expandable. We have the capacity to expand. Amen? The Bible says that we are called to go from glory to glory, from strength to strength, from success to strength to success, from healing to healing. Amen? You are expandable. Hallelujah. And you cannot be expandable unless you are flexible. You need to be able to be malleable, to be open for God to do a work in you and I in ways that he chooses to do. Amen? We don't get to choose how we're going to expand. Amen? God do the expanding in us and for us. Amen? So are you ready to amplify? I'm believing that by the end of this year, we'll be able to amplify our voice, amplify uh, the, the voice that God has placed inside of us so we can have more, you know, more, take more ground. Amen? Amen. Amen. So Isaiah 54, verse 2 to 3, the Bible says, Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwelling." Do not spare, lengthen your cords, and strengthen your stakes. For you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the des desolate cities inhabited. Amen. Are you ready to be enlarged? Are you ready to be enlarged? Yes. Hallelujah. Are you ready to be stretched out? Praise God. So, today I feel in my spirit I want we do something different. We're going to do some praying because we are our last day of prayer and fast. This week has been amazing. God has really revealed himself. We've been able to declare the word of God uh, over our lives, over this church. Uh, we came Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday for prayer and fast. But today I want we pray together for one another. Amen? Before we do, I'm just going to just read a couple of verses uh, for us because 2020, I know there's some of us who have come in this year and you look back at your life, you're like, God, I'm not where I was, I'm supposed to be. Uh, you know, I can't believe I'm still in this same place. I can't believe I'm still struggling with that same thing, whatever it is. I know some of us, we still feel that way. It's 2020 and I'm not married yet. What's wrong with that picture, amen? I don't know. Whatever it is that you feel like you should be at and you're not at. Uh, I want to talk to you today because it is God who gives power to prosper and to get where you need to be, amen? Our lives belong to the Lord. We have no power to change, to add, and to remove anything when it comes to the call of God upon our lives. I want to encourage us today to know, to, to, for you to know you are where you need to be at this moment. Amen. You need to find peace in that and find peace in the God who has created you. If he permits and he accepts that where you are is where you need to be, be at peace with it. Say, I'm at peace with where I am at. I am not excelling maybe in areas of my life I would like to excel, but if God chose to decide that where I am, that's where I am, so be it. We need to learn to give glory to God from where we are at. We are too busy running after that thing. When I get there, then I'll be happy. When I get there, then I'll feel I'm a success. When I get that job, then I feel I'm going to start living. Life starts now. Amen. At whatever situation, condition, and level that you are at. Amen. 
Listen to me, the enemy always comes to steal of our joy. Always putting a carrot ahead of you. And uh, you are in this race of trying to pursue something that's not possible. Life is in the journey. It's not in the destination. Listen, it's not in the destination. 2020, we need to enjoy every moment where we are at. God said, I have come that you may have life, life in abundance, to the full, till it overflow. He did not come. I have come so that one day you're going to have in ab- life in abundance. Abundant life is now and for now and for this season. For every moment of our life, there is an abundance of life. It's just how you choose to look at it. The enemy is still from us. When I'm married, then I'll be happy. Who told you when you're married, you'll be happy? (laughs) And then you you get married, and then you're all happy. And then if I have a kid, maybe I'll be happy. And then the kids show up, then you're you're going even more crazy. Jesus. That's the enemy that plays with our mind. You need to learn to be happy at every stage and every moment of your life because of the God that lives inside of you. It doesn't matter. It's not things that give us joy and happiness. It's knowing that the God who has created us, who knows what he has placed inside of us, is for us and he's working for our good. Today, I want you to say, I choose to be happy. I choose to rejoice in the God of my salvation. Regardless of what I go through, today, I choose to rejoice in the God of my salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is well with you. It doesn't matter what you don't have. You always lack something. You will always lack something. But there's one thing you can never lack. It is the presence of God. It's the righteousness of God. It's living in the joy of the Holy Ghost. The Bible said the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. This is the kingdom of God. It's not the things we ask and give us. It is the joy of the Lord. It is the peace of God. It is the strength of God. Let's enjoy God. Let's enjoy his ways of doing things. 2020, we're going to expand in our capacity to enjoy the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. I tell you, we are too busy. The world is too busy. We want the American dream. How about the God dream? How about the God dream? The contentment that comes of knowing that he is in charge of your life, that he's in charge of my life, that regardless of what I go through, in this I'm confident that the God in whom I trust, he will never leave me nor forsake me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We shall expand, expand into in the Holy Ghost, in God, in seeing things the way God sees them. Praise the Lord. Like Burundians say, I don't know how to say it in English. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 7, verse 15. We shall expand. We are expanding, amen? I want God to expand our capacity to find joy in every moment of our lives. In every situation that we find contentment and joy. Not because of that situation, but because of the God who lives inside of us. Amen? Hallelujah. Romans 7, 15. I do not really understand myself. For (laughs) 
Praise the Lord, amen. <laughs> for what I want to do, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. Hallelujah. <laughs> I mean, this is Paul speaking. This is the guy, amen. The Bible said that he was telling us how he had revelation that he can't even talk about it. That it's so big, inexpressible, he cannot utter. Maybe in his human language he couldn't say it. Or God could not allow him to express it. And it's not even in the Bible. This is the guy that when he touched a handkerchief and they put it on people and he would get healed. Hallelujah. This is a guy who played with serpents and said, go, go on serpent, viper. You have no room in my life and nothing would happen to him. This is the Paul who's speaking. Amen? I want to talk to some people here who feel like I'm not there yet. God, why I'm still struggling with that struggle for 18 years? It is the same devil I'm dealing with. Today, I want we come to a realization that this walk with God is not a walk of perfection. Hallelujah. It's not a walk of perfection. The Bible said that God gave power to Paul to do miracles, unusual miracles. Amen? He said, the Bible said this guy, one day he was preaching and it took forever. Amen? And some guy was on the window. He just started snoring, whatever. And he fell three stories, just fell down. Amen? And he died. And then Paul just went there and hugged him and he said, don't worry, he's alive. This is Paul we're talking about. Yeah? And this is what he wrote. He said, I don't really understand myself. Uh, sometimes me too, I don't get in me. But anyway, so, for I want to do what's right, but I, what I, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. Today, I want to bring freedom. But because there's no expansion without, you know, vulnerability. To understand that, you know all that, okay? Amen. I know you come to church all dressed, looking cute and powerful, looking like you are, you know, the most holy of holies, amen, holier than Jesus. But you know what? We got to get real sometime. This Christian walk, it's not a walk of perfection. It's each one of us walking in this journey with Jesus, with our brokenness, amen, with, our, with the things that we struggle with. And I believe there's no expansion without being vulnerable. Assessing where you are at, hallelujah, and understanding that it is God who gives us the power to overcome. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Because I want to pray after. I don't want to pray fake play prayers. I want God to reveal things in your life that are not that cute, that you try to put makeup on, you know, try to make look good and all holy. Amen? So I want to tell you about this guy who, I mean, after Jesus, is Paul in the New Testament, yeah. for heaven's sake. You know, this is a guy who said, one thing I do, forgetting all things, I press. This is a guy who was passionate for God. He was willing to do all, everything for God. Jesus told him, I'm going to show you how you're going to suffer for me. This is not a sinner. This is somebody who was sold out for Jesus. Like you and me in this house, amen? amen. Like you and me in this house, amen? amen? This is Paul speaking, a mature Christian. This wasn't a carnal person who was standing and saying, you know what? One day I'm into Jesus, another day I'm not. So I'm just going to justify myself, say, you know what? I can't do this. This is one guy who was sold out for Christ. The struggle is real. Come on, the struggle is real. Look what Philippians 3, 5, 6 says. This is Paul talking. He's trying to give his credential to the people of, Philipp of Philippa. I was circumcised when I was eight days old. I'm a pure-blooded citizen of Israel and a member of the tribe of Benjamin. I'm a real Hebrew if there was one. I was a member of the Pharisees who demand the strict, strictest obedience to the Jewish law. 
I was zealous that I harshly persecuted the church. And as for righteousness, I obeyed the law without fault. Amen? So this guy wasn't playing around. He wasn't coming to the kingdom of God just to have fun. He understood he was a Pharisee who just wanted to follow all the law of Moses. I'm not talking about a carnal Christian. Am I talking to somebody today? This is Paul. Before he met Christ, this is the kind of guy he was. He was a zealot who was decided to follow all the love of, of the law of Moses. I mean, to the T. Amen? And then he meets Christ. And then he starts suffering for Christ, serving God, and going through all kinds of tribulation. You know, I was thinking about it today. I said, it's like you and me. You know, when we come into the kingdom of God, we love God so passionately. And you know something happens because we want to please God. Then we start pulling laws, amen, upon our lives. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. This is I'm going to do this. this. I'm not going to sin. I'm not going to curse. I'm going to give my tithe. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? A real born again Christian, when they come to Christ, they really want to follow God. Do everything that God wants them to do. But then there is a fine line between wanting to do the will of God and entering in that place of self-righteousness. That you take hold and charge of your life. Now you say, God, I'm going to serve you. I'll do everything you want. And then you just enter into a place of uh, self-righteousness. Say self-righteousness. Am I talking to somebody? For the first few years of my life, I entered into self-righteousness. And because I was enough disciplined and I come from a good family, it was easy for me. So Paul comes from a religious strong background where he followed the law. And then he meet with Christ. And he's talking about the law of the sin that lives inside of us versus the spirit of God that gives us liberty. And I bet if he's like me, which I believe, he started serving God, following the rules, the law, the self-righteousness, the religious capacity that he had in him because he loved God. Today we'll find freedom. So, me, to be angry, impossible. You can scream all you wanted before. Now I'm just, you know, we need the grace of God for it. You know? (laughs) You could scream to me, curse on me, do whatever. I could look at you. There was no... I could listen to you, and I'll be so self-controlled. And I'll be so religious about it. And I thought that was Christ. No, no, it was the grace of God upon my life. Because I grew up proper, I didn't have to deal with a lot of demons. I wasn't broken, so I was able to handle a lot of stuff. But then there comes a time in a Christian walk where there's things you cannot handle. You cannot overcome in your own capacity. Today, I want to expand. I believe that God wants to expand our capacity to let grace to come in. Amen. 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 We let grace come in. I believe that Paul came to a place where what he was able to do in his carnal nature, he came to a place where he couldn't do it anymore. And that comes through pressure. Sometimes pressure comes in your life. Where the things you thought you can handle, you can't handle anymore. Where God starts showing you the wickedness of who you are. Because he wants to impart grace to liberate you and transform you. And that's what I want. That 2020 will give room to grace to have its full effect in our lives. Because you see, grace cannot be effective where self-righteousness, religious, and discipline is. Because the Bible said that when you are weak, then you are strong. It's when weakness is displayed that the grace and the strength of God comes into effect. Hallelujah. 
I want Cross One Fellowship to be a church full of grace. Amen. That when we enter into the presence of God, Paul, because the closer you get to God, the closer you, re you realize how wretched and sinful you are. It, it, because it's not anymore about how big is the sin. It's about the realization how holy God is and how wretched you are. So I'm not talking about living in habitual sin and you start reading this verse, what I want to do, I can't do, and what I hate. I, no, no. It's to get to that place with God. You realize that without grace and mercy, that you cannot accomplish what God wants you to accomplish. Hallelujah. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Today I feel God wants cross point fellowship. Can we put aside religion, self-righteousness, makeup that we have covered? Because God wants grace, because we're seeing about grace abound even more. Amen. That we come into our hearts, we are rich, all these areas of our lives, that we are fighting in hiddenness in hiding that and then we justify it we justify it but whatever you justify you buy it becomes yours fully but when we come naked in the presence of God we expand our heart to open up to the brokenness of the human condition then God comes in in his mercy and in his love and say, let me help you get out of that place. It's not for you to do it. Let my grace be abundant in your life. Amen. If Paul got to a place that there are certain things he couldn't deliver himself from, a zealous man full of the Holy Ghost, a Hebrew of Hebrews, a Pharisee of Pharisee, hallelujah, Amen. who God, you know, visited, who affected the world up to now, can come to that place and say, what wretched man I am. That God wants us to come to that place of wretchedness. And you say, God, who have I become? The thing I never wanted to become, I have become. We want grace to come in. We want grace to take his full effect in our lives. The other day I was writing to somebody, a friend of mine in Montreal, I said, this verse, I was writing this verse. I said, what kind of wretched woman I have become? The things I never thought that I could be, I have become. Never laugh at somebody because they are struggling. Because you don't know where they come from. Yeah. Number two, you don't know how far you can go. You know, sometimes God will put you in situation to show you how wretched you are, how wretched you are. So that grace can come into effect in our lives. So Paul was a man who was humble. He understood that I am what I am by the grace of God. That God said, without me, you cannot do anything. Hallelujah. Amen. Then we can reach out to this world. But today, I want we pray. Because I feel we need to pray for one another. Amen? Amen. That we open our heart. Amen? Amen. Say, I'm going to open my heart. Open my heart to the grace of God to come in my heart. I'm going to make room for God today. Amen? Amen? And then we'll pray that all these things have been lingering in our lives, that you don't seem like you can get over it, that God would break that cycle in our lives. But we can't break that cycle without us coming to that place or realization that I cannot do anything without Christ. Amen. Amen. It's a beautiful place 
to realize how messed up you are and how big God is. And how God is able. I'm going to believe that the grace of God today will be available to come and heal us and restore us. Amen? That the walls that we have built up, amen, that God will break them so we can leave room to the love of God to expand in us. Hallelujah. God spoke to me. We need to speak light in areas in our lives where things, there's darkness. We're going to declare the light of God wherever there's darkness in our lives. Amen. And we're going to need somebody to pull us up in prayer and prophetic adoration. Amen. We're going to bring the light of God in every situation of our life because God wants us to be free and free indeed. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask the, 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 the musician to come here. We're going to pray. Amen. It saddens my heart when I see marriages going through a hard time. Just musician. Marriages going through a hard time. Relationships going through a hard time. We need to bring the light of God to come into these areas. Amen. Amen. We are filled with the spirit of God. God is able. I'm going to ask Pastor Sabbath to come take the microphone. He's going to pray, and then we're going to pray. Stand up, stand up. I'm going to ask all the leaders. I want you to go in the back, in the middle. You're going to, you're going to hold somebody's hand you don't know. The 172, wait a little bit. The 172 gatekeepers. I want you to just go inside. Amen. And we're going to pray. The Bible said that the fervent, the effective prayer of the righteous avails much. This whole week we've been praying. Let's ask God to seal this fast and bring liberation, liberty to our lives. Amen. That you would open up your heart. Today it's not about your wife. It's not about your children. Today it's about you and you alone. It's not about your co-workers. It's about you inviting God in those dark areas of our lives and say, God, today I'm just going to open my heart up. I'm going to open my mouth wide so that the word will come and bring life in my spirit. Certain things we need to get over once and for all. Amen. Amen. Take your hand two by two. We're going to pray two by two. Just hold somebody you don't know. Just pastors, go somewhere. Hallelujah. You guys can come in front. Come in front. Two by two. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray that the spirit of grace would come and fall upon us. That as we end this fast and prayer, that those things that's been lingering in our lives, that they don't seem to go, that we pray for one another, that something would happen, something would happen, something would happen. The Bible says that in the beginning, let me read it so we can go by the Bible verse, amen. start praying now. Two by two, two by two. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Today I don't know what doesn't have a shape, what doesn't have a form in your life, what is dark and deep. Today we're going to bring the light of God in those areas. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. I believe by the Spirit of God that He's here. He's hovering at this moment. And, 
And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Today, every area of your life, we're going to declare the light of God. You're going to say, let there be light as you pray for your brother and your sister. Hallelujah. Did you get it? You're going to say, let there be light, God. Let there be light, God. You're gonna start praying. Let there be light. 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 Let Ikele mete ke reke tikato tamara makoshi kete ikara makoto ko lekere ya lina mandoto ko taka taka ya yere mendola rara manga taka ya shikere makoto ko laka ya kata ka let there be light let there be light let there be light let there be light in the name of Jesus oh hallelujah. Lira ma shikere me kora la la ya yende ke te ki ka kota kata kata ikara ma ko shike te ke re me koto luka ta ka te ke te ke de re me ndola la ra ma ndala ya ya ra ma ko shike ti kala de ke te ke te ke te ke de ke ri ma ko ta ka ra ma koto ike me ke te ke ya ka lamba koto ko ti ke te ke de ke re me koto ko ya let there be light let there be light in the name of Jesus oh father we thank you we thank you Jesus oh makarama ko la kayata ye mere mendola rama kaye ikata kato ye re me koti karama ko ikata karaka ya lende le mendo kataka ya ye re me kotokola ikete kete ke let there be light, let there be light in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you, God, for open doors. Open doors, open doors, open doors. Yere me kula karama kolaka. Yeke teke teke teke. Yeke reme kotoko. Oh, touch your people, oh God. Touch your people, touch your people. Touch your people in the name of Jesus. Oh, ramba kota karama kole. Rife pepeya. Lord, we decree and declare freedom, oh God. Freedom upon your people in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you for healing, oh God. We thank you for breakthrough. Breakthrough anointing, oh Lord. Breakthrough anointing in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. La rama korama karama kayada. Yere ke teke 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 teke. Yeke teke 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 teke. Lord, I decree and I declare freedom upon your, your people, oh God. Lord, you say it in a world, oh hallelujah. Lembe korama katakala. Yeke teke teke teke. Ikarama kotakaya. Yirama kotokorakala. Oh God, you say it whom the sun set free is free indeed. Lord, I thank you for freedom, oh God. Your words say where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Thank you for liberty this day. Thank you for freedom in the house in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Lere me korama kayaya. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ya ya ma kora ma kata kara kala la kara kata 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 ka deke 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 inge deke 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 rikara ma koto kora kata kara ka ya kama koti kara ma kolo yo ya 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 ma kora ma kara ma kata kara thank you for touching your people Lord thank you for touching Lord thank you for visitation thank you for oh hallelujah thank you Holy Spirit for what you are doing right now hallelujah. In the midst of your people, oh God, thank you for your anointing, oh God, the anointing that is present in this house. Oh, ya makura makala, ikata tokola, lere mere mere ya 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 makota karama. Thank you for what you're doing, oh God, for what you're doing in the midst of your people. Rumba karama kotekele, reke rembe kete kerembe kete ke. Removing burdens, oh God. Oh, we thank you for freedom, oh God. We thank you for open doors, oh God. We thank you, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Rima karama korakaya. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, let there be light. Whatever there is lack, let there be light. Whatever there is hunger, let there be light. Whatever there is sickness, let there be light. 
Whatever there's pain, let there be light. Whatever there's poverty, let there be light. Let there be light, let there be light in your lives. Let there be light in your situation. Let there be light, let there be light. Every form of darkness, we rebuke it in the mighty name of Jesus. Every shepherd's life, we, we give it shape today in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the creative power of God come in your void, in your life, in your brokenness, in your lack of capacity. Let the light of God come and give you the grace to overcome in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let there be light, let there be light. Hallelujah. The Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says, stay here, we're not done. In 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5, for though we live in this world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapon we fight are not the weapons of the world. They have divine power to demolish stronghold. Today we're going to demolish stronghold in our lives, amen? We're going to demolish every argument, every pretension, that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we're going to take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Are you hearing me today? Today, I want to break down every belief system that is not from God, that is demonic. Hallelujah. Every system that is demonic, every behavior that raises up is itself against the knowledge of God in our life, everything that comes against, that resists, the word of God or the ways of God. Amen. Today, I want we pray, we break down. There's those stubborn characters that are in us. Very stubborn. They don't seem to want to go. Amen. They are stubborn in us and we think it's our personality. But there is a devil behind it. They make us very stubborn. They make us not willing to do things God's way. Amen. We're going to break those strongholds in our lives. We're going to just bring them to the alignment and to the obedience of Christ. Amen. Because it's those strongholds that destroys relationships, that are destroying marriages, that are destroying our parenting ways, that are destroying the way we do things. Because we made up our mind. It's like there's a, a, like a God in us. We will not, we don't want to move. When we, we believe something, we don't want to move. Even if God come and speak to us. Those stubborn character, they are not from you. They are from the devil. Amen. Because God said we are flexible and expendable. So whatever that is rigid in you, that is not from God. It's a stronghold and it's a system that comes to come, that wants to come against the knowledge of Christ. So we're going to pray for one another. We're going to tear down all those systems, amen? All those mindsets in our mind. All those arguments we give ourselves and that we believe a lie when it's a lie from the devil, amen? Are we ready? We're going to pray. We're going to break those systems today. Break it. Take the word of God. Pray for your sister and your brother to say, and take a stand against the system in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's pray. Father God, we give you praise. We give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Today we declare that we are expendable. Our mind is expendable to the ways of God. We come against every argument that comes against the knowledge of God. Every high thing that raises up itself against the knowledge of God. Today, we bring it under arrest. We break its yoke of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray, pray, pray. Yanda kati karama koto koya, yes tongo makati keleya, yende kete kero kola, diki ti karama koto kola ke, yete tete ke me koto ko, di karama koto kola, yete kete 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 karama ko, loko ta karama ko te kere me. Every strong door, every stronghold come down in Jesus' name. Laramando kala ramakata kaya kala, 
Takatike Rebeko Tokola, Ika Yete Yaya, Yamando Koleke Teke, Tika Taka Toko Tikete, Ekere Meko Tokolaka, Landa Yata Tata, Ete Teke Teke, Eke Teke Teke Teke, Ekere Meko Tokora Kalaramako, Ekere Meko Tikaramako Takara, Akaramako Seke, Ekere Meke Teke. We come against any strongholds. Every strongholds come down in Jesus' name. Shalama koti kalarama kota karama kata kaya akarama koto kora karara ya leke teke rembe koto kora kalara eke rembe kota karama ndola rara ya ya yere ndeke rembe kola rara ya ikia kato kota kateke teke eke teke rembe kota ikarama koto kora kaya eke rembe keteke. Thank you for victory. Thank you for victory, O oh God. Thank you for victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mandala la mandoko leke reme kota kaya eke rimarandala. Thank you for freedom, O oh God, and the life of your children, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, Amako. Thank you for your anointing. Oh, hallelujah. Aramako la kayete ye. Ye te te me keteke. Ye kere me koti kataka. Ayayaya makotaka. Ike kete kete kete. Ye kere me korakayaya. Ye nde kete 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 keya. Ikaramako toko rakayaya. Inde kete kere kele kere keya. Oh, ya makotaka ramate tete. Thank you, oh God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Your word say, whom the Son set free is free indeed, Lord. Thank you for freedom, O oh God, in the life of your people, O oh God. We break every power of darkness in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare freedom, O oh God. Let there be freedom in the life of your children, Lord. Oh, Rama Koreke Leke Yekeya, Ikata Katoko Takatoko, Likata Kareme Ketekere, Lekere de Yeyeya. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 of liberty, of liberation, Father God. Yes, Lord. Liberation, mighty God, in this house. Liberation, That we Lord. are expanding to you for your glory, God. Okay. For your glory, God. For your okay. glory, God. For, for your, your glory, glory yes. God. Now, Psalm 119, verse 130. I'm reading out of the Passion Translation. Psalm 119, verse 130. Okay. The Bible says, Break open your word within me. Until revelation light shines out. Amen. I believe the majority of us, we have had knowledge, but there's no revelation light. Because when revelation light comes, it brings healing, deliverance. It brings change. Amen. Until revelation light shines out. Amen. Those with open hearts are given insight into your plans. Today I want to pray that revelation light comes in our heart. That God may open his word within you until the light of God comes and makes every darkness in our heart. Amen. We want the change to come from within out. So I want you to pray for your neighbor for revelation light to come and shine inside of us. Revelation light, revelation light. That the word of God would be open within each one of us. That we would, we would receive it from our spirit, not from our intellect. Hallelujah. Say, Revelation light come. Revelation light come to me. That brings healing, salvation, deliverance, and change. Come on, pray for your neighbor for revelation light to shine out in our hearts. Revelation light, revelation light. Father God, break open the word today. Break open your word in our spirit. Break open your word in our heart today. Break open your will in our heart, God. Let revelation light come in us. Let revelation light come in us, God. Let your life come in us. Revelation light in us, Papa. Reveal yourself 
Because of the power of God living within you, that which you couldn't do, you shall do now. That which you couldn't do, you shall do now. You shall do now. Sin has no hold over you. You shall expand. You shall expand to the left and to the right. Do you believe it today? Do you believe it today? Do you believe it today? Hallelujah. I woke up very angry in my spirit today. Very angry in my spirit. Because I am tired of the enemy to play around with us. We have the weapon of God. Christ in us, the hope of glory. It is well with you. This week, I'm going to believe that God will give you revelation light in every area of your life so that alignment can come in your lives. We don't want to preach philosophy. We want to preach the gospel. We want to preach God, Christ being crucified. We want him to come in your spirit and bring light for wherever there is darkness. Do you understand? I'm believing that this year we'll have babies, we'll have weddings, we'll have increase, that we'll have expansion, we'll have liberty in us to be all that God has called us to be. 
Hallelujah. We shall expand to the left and to the right. And the joy of the Lord will be our strength. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you believing today? Yes. We're going to give a praise song to the Lord today. And I feel if you have a word for somebody, go give it to him or her because they need it. It might be a revelation light for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want this church to be a church not only on fire, but a church that is free. Free to worship our God. Free to be who God has called us to be. Free to enter into our destiny. Hallelujah. And so it shall be. It shall be. It shall be. It shall be. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What song do you have for me? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, Jada. You may feel like I'm no, so praise, 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 praise. We are celebrating. Hallelujah. To the all, I will lift up my voice in praise. Is it praise? I don't know it. <laughs> to the all, I will lift up my voice in praise. For I know you are always there for me. Just sing or just hang or just a song. Okay, I just feel something in my spirit. Every woman who wants a husband, please come in front. We want to pray for you. We need weddings this year. Come in front. In front here. In front, in front, in front. In front. <laughs> yes. You don't want a husband? I cannot be. Hey. <laughs> you guys don't want no husband. Some, some of you feel like you're not sure of what you want. If you're not sure, go back. Hey. So I want. Okay, 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 okay. I will lift up my voice in praise. Just, just wait, just wait. No, no, we want the women first. Okay. So because we want the men to see. Amen. <laughs> Behold the handmaiden of the Lord. Turn around so some people can see you guys. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want you to line up. Line up. Line up. We need husbands for you guys. Look at this. Jesus. Where are our pastor men? Come pray for these women. We're going to break that.